Okay, continuing on with our home lab series, this will be part three. If you have a Synology NAS and your home lab home server, you can use that Synology NAS for storage, for backups, uh, drives, whatever you want to use it for as a storage device across the network. I'm going to show you how to set it up. Y'all stay with me. Hey everybody, Scott Burnett here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. Hope everybody's doing well today. Let's get to it. Home lab. So we've went through what is a home lab and we've built our home server and then we have went through and tweaked it and then we've created a virtual Ubuntu server. So now, once you have everything set up going good there, we need to do a backup scheme or a storage scheme or both. So if you have a Synology NAS, and I have one, I have a 918 plus with four eight terabyte drives, a couple of 256 gig NVMe drives in it, um, use it for all kinds of storage and backups. We're going to do that today with our Proxmox. All right, let's switch over to our Synology NAS and we'll get started. All right, so here we are on our Synology NAS. Let me shut that down right there. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's go to the control panel, and this is DSM 7.1. something, I believe. So, what we are going to do, we're going to go here in the control panel and we're going to go to shared folder. And we're going to create a new shared folder. Just like that. And we're going to name it. We don't, what do you think we ought to name it? Proxmox? Let's name it Proxmox. And we'll say Proxmox Storage. R A G E. All right. And we're going to hit next. We're not going to encrypt it. Um. Let's do two terabytes for a quota. We just want it to have two terabytes on the volume. There, and we'll, if thing looks good there, hit next. And for my user, I'm gonna have read write access. I need to go in and delete that admin user. Um, we're going to do that. I'm just going to use my user for it because I'm the, the tinkerer down here. All right. So when, once you get that done with, there's our volume or our shared folder. What we're going to do, we're going to go to file services. Now, Proxmox uses SMB settings. This is the, the standard like Windows shared folder. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to advanced settings and right here, this maximum SS, maximum SMB protocol, we're going to say three. That's something that I watched on another video, how they did, because they had problems setting it up. We're going to hit save. We're going to hit, yep. And should be good to go. We're going to hit apply and close this out or now we'll just go to Proxmox. Okay, so here we are in Proxmox. So what we're going to do, we're going to go up here in the data center part of the server view. We're going to go to storage. And I only have these three disks in here. So what we're going to do, we're going to add. And we're going to go down to SMB CIFS. And I'll link, the, link what that is in the uh, description, but it's just file sharing. It's the normal file sharing protocol. So here under the add SMB CIFS, I'm gonna call this Synology. My server, I'm gonna put my IP address in there. My username, my 
my super secret password. And let's see if it finds my share now. And there's my shares. Wow. All right. So I only have one node. It's my PVE. I'm gonna call it that. And our content. So it's gonna give us a whole list of things. Now we can use this Synology share as storage for our ISOs, storage for our backups. We can also use it for virtual disk, virtual hard disk for our VMs. So when we crank them up, it can hit the Synology and use it for our storage drive. And that's a pretty neat feature. Uh, if my network was faster than a gig, it would probably be better. But... So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold my control key and I'm going to select everything but snippets. I don't think I need snippets. So we're going to do that. And now we're going to hit add. And there it is. Now that's pretty cool. So now if you see over here, I have my three drives and then I have my Synology. And if I want to upload an ISO image, so if I upload an ISO image, I can go right here and go down to right here and then my Windows 11, open it up and five gigs, I'll hit upload. That's a pretty neat deal if I can do that. Now once this uploads, I'll show you about the backups. All right, it finished uploading. I'll close this out, no errors on our upload. Okay, we we'll wanna to go to our Ubuntu server. This is our only VM that we have installed so far. We're gonna go down to backup. And as you can see now, there's a blue button here that says backup now. My storage, you can tell it your local storage or you can do your Synology. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now, you can set this up to be automatic for this demonstration, doing it manually. Do it back now so you can do, now here's, here's what you do. You can do your storage can be your Synology or your other one. It can be a snapshot, um, suspended or stop protected. We're just gonna do a snapshot. You can do compressions. We're gonna do fast and good because I have plenty of storage. I'm gonna send myself an email. And you could put notes in here for your backup. So we're going to do that. So we're going to hit backup. And there it goes. It's going to do a snapshot of my machine. Now the first one will be pretty good size. You know, it'll be the full 32 gigs more than likely. So it's writing in anywhere from 120 megs a second to what's 241. That's pretty good over a gig connection. Well, I do have a new 2.5 gig adapter. That may that may be helping throughput a little. I don't know. Let me do a test on that. I need to do a test to see how that adapter goes. I need to figure out how I can uh, do a bonded network connection. Well, I've done that before. So I do a bonded network connection from the NAS to the switch. I need to do that. So the one good thing about running backups, automated or manual, you can still use the VM. It doesn't affect it. It might affect speed a little bit, but you can keep on running with it. So that's a pretty neat deal. So let's just see how long this takes. 
We're at one minute and 27 seconds. Just imagine how fast you could do it like on an enterprise server on a 10 gig network. That would be, that would be cool. Okay, it took 134 seconds to transfer 32 gigs. At 244.5, I guess that's megabits. Not sure. Finished. The archive file size compressed is a little less than 15 gigs. That's pretty cool. That's, it took two minutes and 34 seconds altogether. All right. So we now have, and there it is right there. Let's show them right at 16 gigs. So there you go. Synology storage for your Proxmox home lab, backing up, file storage, whatever you want to do. Simple, easy, do it in just in a few minutes. So if you got any questions, leave them down in the comments section. I answer all of them. If you do it a different way, let me know. I want to know this. Anyway, that's it for today. Hope everybody gets something out of it. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell to be notified when I put out more content like this. And I plan on, because I want to build this home lab up to where it's very functional, usable, and it helps somebody out in the long run. So that's it. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope you're having a good week. And like I always say, until the next video, thanks for watching.